Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is again a voice recording to replicate an animation by CG Shortcuts done in Cinema 4D. The original tutorial was uh, very good. So I think uh, we're just going to replicate their strategy using Blender Geometry Nodes. So let's start. So here we in Blender, let's go to Noding, create an object and Geometry Node tree. As always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. So let's start with the most important part in which we're going to deal with the sewing. So we need to start with an arc and I would like to direct that with the transform. And let's just uh, take 90 and 90. Okay. Next thing is about the instancing. So let's take a point instance. We need to deal with the points, which can be easily done with a curved linear node. Curved linear node is basically just a curve line, a resample the curve line. Okay. I'm going to switch to the y axis and the turn off the center and turn on the step. So right now, this is what we're getting. And by increasing the count, then you're extending it. Just to know that in reality, they are separated arcs, which are being instanced. So this is very important. Please do not misunderstand that. The next part is a little bit tricky uh, as we're going to make kind of rope geometry onto these kind of curves. Usually, in my tutorial, I'm going to use a helical connection node. And uh, I've just explained in a tutorial talking about the twisting spiral along with many other tutorials. However, in this particular case, this will not work because these are separated arcs. Okay, Helical connection node only works for connected splines. You can definitely connect these splines too, but uh, it's probably not a very good idea as we move further. So here we're going to use another method, and this method turns out to be another new preset, which is called helical connections. So far, I keep both within the preset library, but in the future, this one will replace the old one. So I'm going to break down this very shortly, but I'm also going to explain how to use that for the moment. So you just connect it to the curves, and immediately this is what you get. It looks kind of very ugly, not very interesting, but there is a twisting options and you plug the filter range and immediately it looks like kind of ugly things. There are many different reasons because of my parameters. So you basically just uh, try to play around these parameters, radius and uh, bevel radius. And this kind of float range, you form these curves. Very handy, very easy. So you no longer need to under you no longer need to point the instance uh, all this kind of sampling from connection, connection, and the flow to combine XYZ and so on and so forth. Okay. So it, it speed up the workflow further, and the benefit is that it can work for separate splines. Okay. Next, we are going to break this down. But this actually has been explained similarly by default cube, I guess. So it's kind of very easy concept. Basically, what we're trying to do here is I'm going to set curve tilt. And then I need this float range in order to control this kind of tilt. And you do not see any effect, but once you curve to mesh, and you need a kind of a circles. So here, let's take a curve circle and the pointing instance that. Let's instance another curve circle. So it forms like this kind of structure and then we just uh, decrease its radius and decrease the resolution, maybe like uh, four, three, five, something like that and decrease the radius. So this will be our profile curve. And once you profile that, it has no effect because it says instances in input geometry are ignored. So which means you have to realize the instance. Okay. And then it forms the structure that you want. Okay, so in this case, it's about uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever nodes. Okay, and of course, float range node is a... Uh, float range node is actually just an accumulated field. So something like that. It, you do not need to worry. So it's just a 7 node. I replace everything with just one node, which I think is a very handy and important. Okay, so in this case, whether you're using a preset or not, the workflow is likely this. Okay, 
And we form the ropes, and this is complete procedure. You can change all this kind of resolution, change the width, change the thickness. It's completely up to you how you want to manipulate that. On the other hand, you want to like to know that this resolution is actually controlling all this kind of twisting thing because it's we're using the step mode. Okay, so trying to play around with these parameters, you can get a very interesting result. In my opinion okay so we now we form the rope we need to animate it animating the tightening effect is pretty straightforward according to the cinema 4d tutorial uh, originally i think it was kind of a sine wave so you decrease the amplitude but uh, it seems it's much more straightforward in cinema 4d strategy in which you just decrease the scale okay and now if we directly decreasing the scale, you can see it becomes much uh, something's wrong. This is because we're working with the dimension of instances. So it will be better if you realize the instance so that it does not change the dimension after you use the, this curve to match. Okay. And then since we know the trick, in this case, you just combine XYZ to take one, one, one. And we're creating a fourth on the z-axis, which we're going to use the directional fourth. Plug that, and there's no effect. Let's get a an empty. So I'm going to switch this empty object into the arrow so that I can see the y-axis better. I'm also going to select this object, still no effect, because we're on x-axis, so it looks like this. Okay. So we're going to turn on the y-axis as you can see, but we're going to reverse the effect. Instead of manipulating this zero and one, I'm going to take a remap zero to one, which is basically a map range, actually a default map range node, which is working on the zero to one. The reason I created this preset is because I do not want to work with five sockets, but just the three sockets. Make the node tree easier to maintain. So in this case, let's just the uh, one and the uh, two. So yes, we have this animation. You can increase the four sides a little bit by increasing the size of empty. So it, the anim the transition looks kind of much smoother as it goes. Okay, which is good. Then we're just uh, going to make up the surroundings. There are plenty, plenty ways of that. Uh, so I do not want to explain too much. Let's just go with the join geometry and create a grid. Okay, join this grid. Let's increase on y-axis and x-axis some bit. Okay, and uh, I need the subdivision because I'm going to deform this plane. So let's increase the subdivision on both x and y. I actually do not know which one is more important. Maybe whatever. Okay, and then we are going to do the deformation. How can we actually do the deformation? It's pretty straightforward, you just use the set position and you can use the fourth. So there are two kinds of fourth that we need to work. One is I only want the, the effect to be applied to on this straight line and there are some other areas should not be affected. So it's basically the spline fourth, which is related to our first curve linear that has been used to instance stuff. And uh, if we plug that to the offset directly, as you can see, there's areas being affected. We only want to affect the z-axis. And here we can try to, let's just decrease it. Yes, I think this is good. So you can see the depressions and you can increase these sides and decrease this maximum so you can play around with this kind of values to the one you like okay another thing is that we want to use the directional fold to drive this depression as in the original tutorial so we're going to multiply the mask so for the mask you always multiply and we multiply with the directional fold and you can see how this depression is propagating itself I think this is already okay. Uh, it's actually pretty surprising to me, but it looks kind of okay. 
But if you aren't happy with this depression, with the directional fall, what should you do? What should I do, right? In this case, instead of creating a new empty to drive a directional fall, you can use the same empty, but you can affect with this directional offset, maybe decrease some values so that it's focusing on, yes, it looks like this. So this is the ways that you can potentially deal with it. And also I realized the plane should uh, be lifted up. So here we can just uh, create another mass node to add up a directional fourth. So we can still use the same empty, but a dir different directional fourth with a different offset. And you can see the direction is opposite. So we can turn a different direction and uh, turn a different direction offset. So it looks like this. Let's turn this into three. And yes, we have some sort of effect. It looks kind of very ugly. We can also increase the scale offset so that the slope becomes different as well. So these are all things that you should play around about self. I'm not... Uh, Sometimes making the animation is not as straightforward as you might think. Okay. And as a last step, there is one interesting part that you need to know. It's that in the original animation, all these kind of ropes are growing. And this is, however, a very kind of a tricky part. Because the end goal is that I'm not using all these kind of nodes, but rather using a helical connections presets to replace uh, these seven nodes. Okay, so that I connect the one node, then replace everything. So it's kind of a very handy idea. And that's basically my goal. Let's just uh, take the 0 0.2 and 0 0.01. Uh, in such kind of cases, it turns to be a very huge question about the design because if we make everything into a group node, then we lose the freedom to access every point in between. Okay. This is something that you need to consider when you're trying to make a kind of a group node or so. And uh, fortunately, there is a very easy part to resolve the growing effect for the moment, which is uh, not to use the trim. <laughs> I'm not talking about the trim node. Because if you trim node, you trim everything at the same time. You trim everything at the same time, so trim is not an option. Rather, I'm going to delete the geometry. Sounds to be stupid, but I'm very serious. And we're just trying to use the directional fault to delete that. And you can see it goes to opposite direction as well. Actually, I think this is a kind of a mistake I made. I should have turned on this negative. But anyway. So here, we're going to use a compare node. So that to make it less than, so less than 0 0.01, it will be killed by the directional fall. So now it looks like this. Although it's not really kind of perfect in my opinion, but I think it's kind of looking good. And uh, I think this looks kind of okay. <laughs> uh, definitely, you have to tweak a little bit more about the fall and its offset so that it's grow faster than the yes something like that maybe offset by one yes i think this is it so finally you just uh, parent your cameras to these views so that you move empty you move the camera as well and to make the loop animation is just the whatever whatever stuff but i think this is it i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i'll probably see you next time bye bye